This video is brought to you by NordVPN. What the hell is the Academy of Magic? Well, it is an animated Harry Potter ripoff. And I don't mean as in kind of, with hints of teenage wizards and witches and magic. <laughs> no, I mean a full-blown movie that rips off Hogwarts, rips off iconic characters, rips off Harry's scar, and hey, let's just rip off Disney while we're at it and make our main character look like Anna from Frozen. Because why not? My name is Aura Heffenpfeffer. Liar! Released in 2020, The Academy of Magic was a blatant attempt to ride the tailcoats of greater properties, with a poster trying to hide that fact. Initially, you look at it and think, ah, well, the characters don't look that bad. <laughs> uh, until you see them move in the movie, or I guess lack thereof. This kid in the background, for example? I don't even know why he's here. He was a bully the entire time and made fun of our main character, and he wasn't even the main bully. That honor goes to off-brand Malfoy. And this lady over here? She wasn't in the movie at all. Who are you? Why are you here? The only thing that holds any water whatsoever is that one of the creators of Pixar's Cars worked on this movie. Yeah, he like wrote it and directed it, which is, I'll be real, more embarrassing if anything. How do you go from this to this? The movie is hilariously bad, with scenes that range from being vacant and boring to needlessly violent and destructive. At one moment, we're in the not Hogwarts cafeteria with the only seven students on campus. But after that, there's an action sequence with two wizards blowing up the entire campus with buildings that were made of Lego. But the thing I cannot get over and made me laugh the hardest was how the film was like, oh, damn it, we're too short. We got to pad this out um, quickly. Show concept art from the film, which is obviously not concept art at all. It's just a filter over screen caps from the movie. And you know what? You'd think there'd be credits going above this. Nah, it's just a slideshow. The credits come afterwards and they take forever. But real quick, add time. So a quick shout out to this video sponsor, NordVPN. You wanna know what sucks more than this ripoff? Being region locked out of shows. You know what, actually I think this is worse, but region locked stuff, yeah, that still sucks. The Office used to be on US Netflix, but was removed years ago. But Canadian Netflix still has it. If only there was a way I could still access the show. Oh wait, there is, boom. With a single press of a button, you can access over 5,000 servers around the world. Easy as that. Nord also offers security and allows you to protect your privacy and encrypt your data. It's also super fast with no bandwidth throttling and streams to your PC and smart device with speed and security. Plus, Nord features a threat protection feature, which offers even more security against cyber threats. It blocks trackers, malicious ads, and steers you away from harmful websites and files. So hit up my link in the description down below and use my link nordvpn.com slash saberspark to get an exclusive NordVPN deal. Also, to commemorate NordVPN's 11th birthday, for a limited time only, you will also receive an additional mystery gift on top of that. Dang, I'm, I'm actually like really curious what that could be. Go hit him up today. Not so fast, Lois. A boat's a boat, but the mystery box could be anything. It could even be a boat. You know how much we've wanted one of those. Then let's just... We'll take the box. The studio behind this movie was Gold Valley Films, a studio I never heard of before. They were founded back in 2012 and are headquartered in Burbank, though I suspect that most of the animation comes from China, based on the credits of this movie alone. Other films they worked on include Little Sorcerer and Cinderella and the Secret Prince. I haven't seen either of them. I don't know if they're anything like the Academy of Magic, but hey, they look pretty on the outside. But if they're anything like what I just watched, then they're probably garbage on the inside. Also, this movie apparently cost $12 million to make, but only made back like $400,000. But even then, it is very obvious that the money for the film did not go into the animation department. I don't know where it went. This does not look like a $12 million film. Me wonders if they did something else with their money. Hmm, I just, I don't know. Allegedly, I'm curious, I just wonder. You're a tax cheat. 
Admittedly, there are some good voice actors in this film, like Ben Diskin and Laura Meganstall, but they had terrible direction and lines to read. It all comes across as very one note with inexplicable shifts in tone that come across as very uncanny. Who are you? I'm Sean. I'm going up to the Academy and this dragon is the ride up there. My name is Aura, by the way. Really? Aura is your name? Uh-huh. Let's get going. Hurry up, Aura. But what about the story itself? Yeah, it rips off Harry Potter, but does it do it well? <laughs> Unsurprisingly, uh, no, it, it, it does not. And let me tell you why. The movie starts off with this yellow robot that is shaped like SpongeBob running with a baby through a storm and just drops a kid at a door of some lady's house and then shuts down. The lady's like, oh, I, you know what? I, I could use a baby with black hair that turns red the next scene over. I'll take this kid. Uh, she's mine now. Why not? It's also revealed that the kid has like this magical scar on her hand, which is like, of course, my own original character, not that uh, charlatan Harry Potter. What are you talking about? The scar is completely different. Also, her name is Aura. Not Anna, Aura. If we're gonna rip things off, Let's do it twice. So time goes on, sunrise, sunset, and Aura grows up on the apple farm. She is now 16 and for some reason has like magical powers. She is also like super tall compared to her auntie and the villagers, but the movie never bothers to tell us why. It's just like uh, they're hobbits, I guess. I don't know. Also, since it is Aura's birthday, the SpongeBob robot wakes up finally and tells Aura, hey, um, you're magical and you need to go to magic school. A uh, good timing because you definitely look the part for a farm girl who works at the Apple farm. I'm, I'm really glad you're already wearing a schoolgirl uniform. Uh, good timing indeed. So Aura and the robot set off to the school with the robot showing off he can play instruments. And it's really impressive actually. He's got a drum, he's got an accordion, he's got a tuba. Uh, he doesn't need a piano. He can play the piano without a piano. He's just that good. So the two get picked up by not Ron Weasley, or I assume it's Ron Weasley. He's got red hair, he's a wizard, he's a boy, close enough. And there is this dragon too, that looks like a plastic toy, like just, just the most uninspired design ever. And the two get to campus in the sky and they get grilled by not Snape and then rescued by Mall Santa Dumbledore. At this point, it is painfully obvious how little these characters emote. They have like two expressions and just flail their arms around like Kermit the Frog. Also, they don't really interact with the environment that well and just look like they're slapped over the setting along with their wonky physics where they float in the air, lazy walk cycles, and awkward scenes where they're hover hand hugging. We are then introduced to the rest of the student body. Uh, not Malfoy, not the Weasley twins, a girl who looks super tired, Friar Tuck, not Anna, and then the love interest, the boy, Ron Weasley. I'm, I'm sorry, not Ron Weasley. That's it. That is literally the cast of students on the campus. Wow, booming industry, right? The students then get their Doctor Strange robes and then they eat at the not Hogwarts cafeteria. Uh, for some reason, the audio engineer for this movie decided to highlight how few students there are on campus by providing this crazy reverb echo. This is nobody here to buff out the sound. It's a terrible acoustics. It's so exciting to be here, don't you think? Do you want to try one of my apples? Also, uh, Malfoy's like, hey, you're a farm girl, Aura. I'm going to make fun of you now. That's my reason. That's my motive. Just because. Screw you in particular. At this point, you would expect the movie to explain more of why Aura is at the school and her family or purpose or just something. What's going on? Why was she abandoned as a kid? There has to be more to it. Nah. Not, not at all. The film's like, you can wait till later or it might not happen at all. The robot is like, you gotta be an enchantress. It is your birthright. But that's all I'm gonna say. I'm not gonna tell you who your parents were. I'm not gonna tell you why you have magic or a scar. I'm just gonna tell you, go to school. That's it. And of course, Aura's like, hey, that makes sense. I'll do it. She's, she's pretty brainless. I just gotta say. You know what? You're right, Yodel. We then get to the classes with not Snape and something about running up this invisible staircase to grab a magic ball. Aura does a rain dance, <laughs> sure, and runs up the now slippery staircase, but Snape just straight up punches her off the staircase. He's like, I don't think so. Bam, get off. Anna then reads a book so she can actually learn magic. She's like, I, I'm not learning anything in these classes. I'm gonna go study magic in the library with upside down books in the background. But then she sees her love interest sneak out of a not very well hidden sliding bookcase. Ooh, the plot thickens. 
Aura then goes to class for transformation spells and gets turned into a butterfly and then has to run away from a butterfly's mortal enemy. A hawk? <laughs> what? Aura then explores not Hogwarts a bit more and finds a door she can't enter. She gives up. She goes to get some more food where not Malfoy is like, I'm going to get her back by... <laughs> Not using magic, by putting hot sauce on this cake slice in front of her face. That'll show her! Only for him to get like the old switcheroo. And he eats the cake and he's like, There's hot sauce in my food! <laughs> I guess he's British after all. Or continues to pine over the mystery boy, the Ron Weasley. Oh, I'm sorry, the not- Ron Weasley, and grows closer to him. The class then has a flying contest, but instead of like using brooms, as one would expect, they get garbage pailets instead, like static shock. Was this inside the dragon pool? Yes, it will function as your flying craft. Now, personally, I choose to believe that they did not have brooms because it would be too difficult to animate and that it wasn't a matter of ripping off Harry Potter. It wasn't like, no, that's too much, guys. We can't do brooms. Let's have some integrity here. No, they have zero integrity. That was just a lazy call. And now, folks, we get to the big reveal and the big twist. Like, up to this point in the movie, this film has had no plot whatsoever, but then gives us all the plot at, like, the 50-minute mark. The film's like, hey, sit down. All right, you're about to get everything. All right, quickly. I will tell you what you should rightfully know. Then you must go. Now. The terrible evil can never be claimed by him. So the boy, the entire time, has been going to this cage in the, I guess, school, and there's an old man locked up. That's his grandfather. His grandfather's like, get out of here. You shouldn't be here. Apparently, he's been locked up for 16 years. Where does he poop? I don't know. Why is he in the cage? Because he's trying to, like, keep this key and spell away from this evil guy. And then he's like, oh, who's that girl behind you? My my grandson. Oh, it's it's a girl. She has this mark. It's you. It's you. Uh, sit down. We'll tell you a story. <laughs> and by the way, this is all poorly, like, given to us in a 2D, like, illustration story sequence that looks like it was done by some eighth grader on DeviantArt. It does not look good. It looks very, very immature. I'm just being real. It looks bad. I don't know what's worse, the 3D or the 2D. Both are pretty rough. So you got, like, this wizard guy who has, like, like a blanket tied around his neck. Like, it's not even, like, a robe or, or a cape. It's like a blanket, like, a kid would get and tie around with a knot. And he's got, like, this really silly mustache. He, he's like, oh, I guess a Doctor Strange cosplayer. He, he founded the wizard school. He was a good wizard. And then he discovered this box of evil magic where they were mining in like the mountain or something. And he's like, this box is evil. It's It's got powerful magic. I gotta hide it. And he like takes this incantation, two spells, and then two keys and gives the two spells and the two keys respectively to his two best friends. I... Okay, I, I I don't know why he didn't keep it himself, but he gave it to his friend and his other friend. One of the friends was the grandfather. The other friend was evil, just evil guy. And he's like, I want the spell and the key so I can have unlimited power. And he locks the other guy in the cage. And then the wizard guy shows up and he's like, I will fight you and battle you. And he like lost. And he's like, oh no, I lost. Runs into a room, sees Aura's dead parents on the ground, takes the baby, cries. He's like, oh no, what, what can I do? What should I do? I, I, I'll build a robot. I'll build a minion SpongeBob robot and give the baby to the robot, which the, the robot just holds the baby over his head, like running off. And he's like, I'll just, whatever happens, happens. And then he got turned into stone. What? I, uh, it's like the film had no exposition, no motives, nothing to work with, no substance, and then just dumps it all on us at the same time in a flashback 2D story sequence that looked awful. God have mercy on my soul. And then we get our twist villain. Who could it be? Could it be this one adult or the other adult on campus? There's to flip a coin, I guess. Is it Snape or is it Dumbledore? Turns out it's actually uh, Dumbledore. Ooh, subverting my expectations. It is Frank, by the way. That's his name, Frank the Wizard. <laughs> Frank. But you may all call me Frank. There are some who call me... Tim? I guess the movie was like, ha, you thought it was Snape. 
the only other adult character, but it was actually not Dumbledore. That's who it was, this, this guy. You know, in a way though, uh, the movie vicariously ripped off Harry Potter by having a once beloved person that was put on a pedestal reveal themselves to be a piece of garbage by saying and doing terrible things, you know? We then get to the final action sequence of the movie where not Ron and Aura fight the dragon for some reason. The dragon's bad now. And I guess this guy and the dragon aren't friends anymore. Frank then threatens to kill this kid and the grandfather is like, no, don't, don't do it. I'll, I'll, I will give you anything. Uh, please don't hurt my grandson. And then he like, calls Frank a bastard. Like why, where, where did that word come? from. I will do everything you say, you bastard. Frank then gets the magical spell and key and gets to access the well of secrets. No, not the chamber, the well of secrets. And then he gets the magic box, but realizes that, oh, there's a third key needed. And he immediately is like, it's Aura, it's her scar, that's the key. Like immediately and was right. He was like, I need a third key. It has to be exactly this. How did you know? Snape then shows up. I forgot he was in the movie. Gets owned and turned into stone. And then Frank turns the rest of the student body, all two of them, into stone too, because, you know, screw him, why not? Also, what's, what is going on with your belt buckle? It's like stretching out and, and, and like has its own like physics. What's going on here, dude? Usually metal doesn't like move like rubber. We then get a wizard fight that includes a magical baseball bat, miniature wizards, and wanton destruction. Ha! You can fly, but you cannot hide. Aura then pleads to Frank, uh, to his compassion, to his power hunger. Uh, but Frank is like, I'm evil. That's it. I I'm just an evil guy, uh, just like Jack Horner from Puss in Boots. And then Frank and Aura have a battle of the ages. Cookie -dee -coo -coo. Frank then accesses the power box and turns into Jafar with his giant floating body and continues to destroy more school property. Uh, I'm asking myself, why? Why the destruction? What's his motive? And you know, there isn't one. You want to know why? Because I'm evil. Aura tries one last desperate attempt to stop Frank by <laughs> making him fat? That wasn't on my bingo card. With her glitchy shirt and ripping off Kung Fu Panda 3, Aura gives a bunch of her own magic to Frank, who is all like, wait, hold on. Uh, Aura, what are you doing? And, and then you'd think that Frank would explode, like, cause he's getting big, but no, he just shrinks back down and gets thrown into the box. And then the movie like wraps up immediately. I'm not joking. As soon as he's defeated, they're like, we did it. Good job. There, we did it. You guys are amazing. The students are then turned back from stone to their fleshy vessels with even new students who are like just now showing up in the film to I guess to show off that they had a student body this entire time. And then you got like Aura's grandfather, the, the wizard from the flashback, that was him. Shakespeare wizard with a Shakespeare hair. Grandfather. I knew you would come here. And folks, that is basically the movie. The dragon is now good for some reason. Uh, Aura is made the headmaster of the school, even though she had like one semester of like actual learning with five like classes, that's it. And, and I feel bad for not Snape here. He's like not getting that promotion. I guess that tracks. But yeah, that's right. This girl, like who's just so new, is now in charge. And she like thanks her friends, quote unquote, with some speech. She's like, I want to thank my friends who helped. And she's like gesturing to the bullies who did nothing to help at all. And yeah, that's the movie. Oh, and again, I can't forget about these concept drawings and the credits that don't feature the credits. How unbelievably lazy. Overall, The Academy of Magic is an unbelievably stupid and basic movie with terrible animation, brainless dialogue, and a plot that is so vacant of any agency that it makes you wonder if any character has any motive besides pretending to be a Harry Potter ripoff in the most insincere and minimal way possible. Why was Aura destined to be a magic user? Not said until the end of the film, so it doesn't matter. Why was Frank evil? Hey, he's just evil, that's it, no explanation. Why are the people of Appletown so short? No idea. So many things are introduced, but with zero substance. The writing in this film was atrocious. None of these characters have any meaningful arcs or charm or personality, and we're left completely in the dark until we're like three fourths to the film. And then they're like, hey, you know what we need? Exposition, all of it, right now, boom. And it's confusing and unrewarding. It's like the movie panicked and was like, oh damn it, we need a plot, duh, 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 the flashback exposition right here, right now. 
You are not from Apple Valley. That is just where the mechanical took you to be raised. You were born here. Your given name is Montrose, and your grandfather founded this school. I'm sorry. What? It is possible that this movie started off with some kind of meaningful intention, but its production completely fell apart. Jorgen here is actually a pretty prolific artist and has a substantial resume, so I'm like very confused about what happened here with this movie. It is very possible that it fell into production hell with a lot of mismanaged funds and a hasten production that yielded a dumpster fire as the final result. And maybe in a desperate attempt for a Hail Mary maneuver, the folks making this movie were like, just make it look like Frozen and Harry Potter and maybe we might get our money back. Womp womp. And here's the thing, the concept of a school with magical users outside of Harry Potter, that can work. The Owl House, they nail it. The Academy of Magic, huh, not so much. So yeah, this film is hilariously bad and has no soul whatsoever. The writing is the biggest sin of all. Like, it shouldn't be that hard to copy the backbone of the character arcs of Harry Potter. But somehow they were even able to screw that up. How can you be Harry Potter and rip it off and not be Harry Potter? This is like writing 101. Give me a character motivation. Build a mystery. Give me something to work with here. But instead, we got a talking robot who looks like a minion procreated with SpongeBob SquarePants and gave us this. Bad dragon, why don't you try me on for size? 